the Kimball method slowly changing dimension component. How do I use this thing? The third technique we're going to use is the T-SQL merge, and it operates a little differently. First thing we're going to have to do is to get that source data into the database because that's where the T-SQL merge command works. So we're going to have to create a temporary table to put the source data in, and then we're going to have to load it in. Now we can take a look at our T-SQL merge command. And as you can see up at the top of my command, I've got a variable defined with a parameter and we're because we're going to be using that date a couple times in the statement. So what we have to do is set that up in the execute SQL task as a parameter. We identify the SSIS variable going in, identify the data type, and identify it as parameter number zero. Now let's go pick apart the command. First section is about SCD1 changes, or what the wizard calls changing attributes. So we're using the merge command from the dimension table to that new source table that I loaded up. We're comparing on the business key. And when we find a match between those two tables and there's a change in the changing attributes, then we're going to do issue an update command and fix up those attributes to what the new source system values are. The next section deals with type 2 changes. And we have to be able to handle three outcomes, brand new rows or existing rows where we've got to expire the old one and add a new version. So we're going to work inside out using the merge command, comparing those two tables on the business key. When we don't find a business key in there, so it's a new record, we're going to insert a brand new row into the dimension table with everything set up, including that new effective date that we pushed in. For those records where we do match a business key, we're going to check to make sure that we have the current record and then see if any of those type 2 attributes have changed. If they have, then we're going to expire the old row by setting the expiry date to yesterday. We're going to ask this merge command to give us its results in an output row set by using the output keyword. We're going to get it to put whatever action it took, either an insert or an update, into a column called action out along with the, all the other columns that we got from the merge command itself, which includes our business key type 1 and type 2 columns. We're also going to append on the effective date, which is our loading date, as well as none for an expiry date, and we're going to call that row set merge out. We're going to filter that output data set and only take a look at the rows which were an update, which are the rows where we expired, and we're going to turn around and insert those into the dimension table with a new effective date and null as an expiry date. So now let's execute that technique. Now let's execute the cleanup step and see if our dimension table has the same rows that it had when we ran the wizard and the roll your own. We can see we've got the new row added to the table with the right dates on it, John Doe's been fixed, and we've got our new operating system on that new row. You've come this far, don't stop now. The next video is what you've been waiting for. We'll show you how to do all this with a Kimball method slowly changing dimension component.